Hello, good people. This is your guy, Mr. Educator, Mr. Communicator, Mr. Free Thinker, coming back at you live once again from the Lone Star State with another edition of the Media Mike Speaks. All right, good people. It is 18 minutes past the hour, and yes, we are the voice of the everyday citizen. All right, good people. Let us talk about the Volunteer State. One of my subscribers sent me this story. Actually, have I heard about it? I said, you know, maybe. But maybe I got this confused with the birth certificate thing in Tennessee that the unwed fathers will be required to sign. Well, no, no. The blood test will have to be given before they sign the birth certificate. That's another video. But this one here, House Bill 1834 out of the grand old state of Tennessee, which I resided in for four years from 1995 to 1999. But anyway, let's talk about this new law. It will require drunk drivers to pay child support for people. What do you think about that? The law is called Bentley's Law. It passed the Tennessee House. Now, Tennessee is the first state in the country to pass this law. And they're hoping that other states will follow suit. Now, how did this law come about? Well, I'll tell you. The law is the brainchild of a Miss Cecilia Williams. She lost her son, Cordell, his fiancée, Lacey, and their four-month-old son, Cordell II, to a drunk driver. The couple left behind two sons, three-year-old Mason and five-year-old Bentley. And that's who the law is named after. And one of the main reasons why, let's give some stats here too, good people. According to the National Highway Traffic and Safety Administration, 28 people in the U.S. die in drunk driving accidents per day. That is one death every 52 minutes. Now, in many cases, children are left without a parent or parents because someone made a choice to get behind the wheel while intoxicated. So I guess what they're saying is these drunk drivers will pay the price, literally. And most of the time, it's weird how the drunk driver somehow lives. They survived the crash. That's the most craziest thing you ever heard of. They, they intoxicated and somehow survived. Most of the time. Most of the time. Now, under House Bill 1834, a person convicted of killing a parent as a result of intoxication or aggravated vehicle homicide. Let me stop you right there. Good people, let me read it again. A person convicted of killing a parent as a result of intoxication. So it doesn't necessarily mean it has to be with a vehicle. It says, or aggravated vehicular homicide is required to pay child support for the surviving children until they graduate from high school. Now, the amount to be paid, good question, is determined by the court. Some of the factors include the financial needs and resources of the child, and whether the child is rich already, you know, trust fund left by the parents or insurance, the financial resources and needs of the, of the surviving parent or guardian of the child, including the state, state if the child is in the custody of the Department of Children's Services, and the standard of living to which the child is accustomed, depending on, like I said, whether the child is rich or financially well off already. Now, additional, additionally, if the person, if the defendant is in prison and can't pay, the defendant has one year after their release to begin payments. If the child reaches 18 and hasn't fully been paid, financial support will continue until the limit is reached. Well, hmm, I wonder would they extend this all the way to college, where it says until 18. I think they're gonna probably go up to 21. Or 22 to the defense college. They will. If this thing really kicks off and becomes successful, as they hope it will be, so they can get more money from the. Now, while this is good news, not everyone thinks it will work. Critics of the law say that if you can't get biological fathers to pay child support, you'll never get convicted drunk drivers to pay. So, these are the naysayers and, and uh, uh, detractors, I would say. Now, it could be good people, possible that uh, they're not wrong. Now, according to Williams, Ms. Williams, she says the law will garnish wages. Yeah. Now, while Bentley's law, the families, with Bentley's law, the families will have some financial burdens lifted. This law will garnish a percentage of the impaired driver's wages. What if they don't have a job? Okay. This will also take a percent percentage of any money sent or made doing Incarceration. Okay. Well, uh, okay. Well, no, that's incarnation. Okay. 
be born again. Although no amount of money will ever make up for the loss, Williams hopes that hitting the offender in the pocket will make them think twice before driving while impaired again. Um, well, okay. Um, hoping she's right. I hope so too. Now, Williams hopes, also hopes this is just the beginning. She wants to be able to be nationwide. I hear, okay, there we go. Now, in the interview with, in the interview with Newsweek, she says, when you kill somebody and you leave kids behind, there's not there's not a parent there to tuck them in. There is not a parent there to see their first date, their graduation, their first car, and you know that it's, it's, it's gone. And the financial responsibility of the parents is gone as well. And I don't think that's fair. I think offenders need to pay for the financial responsibility, uh, responsibility in a lot of ways because I think it's going to teach them not to do it again. Unquote. Uh, it depends. Always it depends. Now, we hope this is just the beginning too. No one should suffer this kind of loss. No one should lose someone they love in such a preventable tragedy, she, she says. So, now, however, holding the guilty financially responsible for the surviving children is at least a step in the right direction. If you say so, or is it? As I stated earlier, people, do you think the government is attempting to uh, extract more money from people? Now, in my opinion, it is a strong if. It is a strong if. Depending on if the person that is the victim leaves behind any children or not, I wonder what the stats are on that. You see, what if the person leaves behind? See, it depends. What if they don't have any kids? I guess it don't apply. Duh. Now, we know drinking and driving is bad. Never a good idea. And like the stats said earlier, 28 people die per day of drunk driving. Accidents, that is. But not all will or may result in child children being left behind. That's the question. See? What if the drunk driver is already paying child support? In some states, you are either tapped out or only a small percentage can be awarded. Will this new law spread to other states? Uh huh. Or do you support this law? Let me know what you think about it. This is one of the cures, I guess, they're trying to say of to curb drunk driving. So I wonder why I didn't mad or sad or glad, you know, get on board with this. I wonder why they didn't even take up this bad to think about this. Hey, maybe they were behind it. I don't know. Well, until next time, this is your guy, Mr. Educator, Mr. Communicator, Mr. Free Thinker. Subscribe, share, and like to keep me rocking on the mic. Have a good night. I'll understand you soon. It won't be long. Keep on, keep on.